<laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> oh, Nate, cheeky little Nate trying to get me there at the beginning. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Knights of Evening Star. We're back. Uh, we had a little break last week, but we are back. I am your Dungeon Master, uh, Mark Humes, also known as Sherlock Humes, uh, Dungeon Master for High Rollers, uh, Caliana on Critical Role. Uh, and I am joined by my wonderful friends, my fabulous friends. I'm going to assume that that they are now assembled. Oh, we could use a a Baymax right now for for some of the team, I think. Um, but yeah, I am joined. I am joined by uh, Anna Prosser, Shady Penguin, Mika Burton, and Nate Sharp. Uh, and yeah, this is Nights of Evening Star. Hello, everyone. How have you been? I missed you. It's been, I missed it's been like you. two weeks. That's so far. It was way too long. It was an eternity. Was. Yeah, I miss all your faces. I miss playing this game. I miss playing I some D&D. I know. Do you remember yeah. how? Because I'm not sure I remember how. I think I've got this one, I think. I okay. think we can get through it together. I, you, know. you guys all have I'm your sure. deck of cards, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> And Attack you all mode, have your, defense like, mode, poppy dice points. thing. Like, like I have my uh -huh. helmet. Out of, yeah. yeah, Connect 4. Yeah. Connect 4? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot That's my Connect 4 that. board. Yeah. Crap. God, go get it. God damn we it. can't play John. without that. No. Come on, dude. Stream's canceled. This is Everybody like a, pack up, go this home. Is, this is like a battle royale, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, cool. uh, last, it's last really popular on Twitch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, cool. really popular servers they though. Ooh, let's hope that they hold out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are brand new, uh, this is you guys at home, not you guys, obviously. I know you guys know what's going on. Um, if you are brand new watching this, uh, and you don't know what Knights of Evening Star even is, to give you the rough synopsis, uh, it is a brand new short campaign set in Cormir, which is in the Forgotten Realms, uh, a land of knights and dragons and nobility and, and very sort of Arthurian politics. Uh, our campaign is about four young heroes who are nobles or people of uh, certain skills and values who have been given titles and are now responsible for a small town called Evening Star. Um, and we are going to see how they develop it and you know how they rescue it and and all of this kind of good stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. Should we do like a really short introductions to characters again? Because it has been a couple of weeks. Um, should we yeah. just do a really quick sentence introduction? Uh, Anna, do you want to kick us off? Sure. My character is Agnes Crown Silver. She is a wildfire druid. She comes from a noble background, but she scorns her noble hair. Noble, not noble. It's like normal noble. and noble. Normal. I don't know. She scorns that heritage, whatever it is, and she thinks that the whole like monarchy is just silly. But she tries to use her pos position to uh, help the people. But her kind of like fiery attitude and irreverent actions uh, often shock people, especially her family. I tag Azara. Hello, uh, I am playing a high elf uh, draconic sorcerer named Azara Mithras, and she is a uh, da, da, high powerful, powerful sorcerer. And she is now a magister. She was she was once just a, a war wizard, not just a war wizard, but a, a, do <laughs> a dope war wizard. Um, and she's now been bestowed the title of Magister of, of Cormier. And uh, she realizes that, you know, she has to serve nobility, even though she could probably burn everyone alive with a single snap of her fingers. But she refuses to because she actually cares about the country and the people and, and politically being a good person, uh, mm -hmm. even though it seems very dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you tag, Mika? Uh, I tag uh, 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 Tarkal. Whoa, my name is Tarkal, AKA Shady, AKA Tarkal Crown Silver, uh, newly appointed Baron of Evening Star. Uh, my half sister is Agnes Crown Silver, and I don't really know what I'm doing both in life and as a noble. So I'm kind of <laughs> looking to Agnes uh, and sort of following her lead. Uh, I guess I would say last week Tarkal gained a lot of confidence when his plan mm -hmm. went through. Uh, so he's kind of understanding that he can think freely and execute things and when they work out that's like totally pog right twitch okay i tag me wow hey i'm playing uh marcel a high elf eldritch knight uh who talks to his sword and his new goal in life is to try and figure out why the hell someone put him in charge of anything <laughs> you know well it, it's kind of somewhat a bit more simple for marcel because he will get paid unlike most of you um he is purely doing this for the money um, what? We're not Tark getting paid. 
<laughs> well, no, you'll get paid through prestige and and uh, honor, and you'll get you know money. But Mar- Marcel is a bit more mercenary, I think, yeah. than the rest of you. Um, you will, of course, get a lovely, fine life of wonderful uh, attire and and luxury um, provided to you. So you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Um, cool, uh, friends. Shall we play some Dungeons and Dragons? I'm ready. Please. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Let's get it, as the kids say. Excellent. Well. To give you a little recap uh, for what happened in the last episode, um, after being given titles and responsibilities for the village of Evening Star, our party of heroes have arrived only to discover it has been ransacked and traumatized by a mysterious, well armed gang of thugs led by a figure called the Thorn Hand. After meeting with their local seneschal, a tiefling called Dusk, and a few other locals, the party have attempted to ambush some of the bandits and gain some information. This plan was successful. Um, Despite a near disaster with a rickety bridge uh, and a broken wagon, the party learned of a mysterious mage and a few potential entry points into Starwatch Keep, the former garrison for Evening Star and the new lair of the Thornhand. Tarkal persuaded a few of the thugs to make a better life for themselves and has had them escorted back to Evening Star by Lady Elissa, your half-orc knight commander. Uh, whilst you guys all snuck up on the keep, sneaking past a few of the uh, posted sentries. Azara, uh, war wizard magister, polymorphed herself into a bird, looking around the keep, scouting it out, and discovered a mysterious woman in green in one of the keep's towers, who seemed to notice Azara, and her eyes flickered an emerald green glow. Mm. And that is where we are going to literally pick up today. The night hangs overhead, a half moon occasionally hidden by a scattering of clouds. When the moon is out, the stone walls of the keep are cast in a light silvery glow, and the grunts and sighs of the guards patrolling the walls mingle with the sounds of the rushing river below you and the crackle and snap of a campfire within the keep's grounds. You're currently crouched in amongst shrubland, looking towards a great gouge through the castle walls like a giant claw. You can see through it into the courtyard that stacked up against the gap are dozens of bodies of Cormerian troops. And that is where we begin. Uh, we do have White Text Friend, uh, those of you familiar who will be given providing commentary, but also White Text Friend, if we could show up the map of Star Watch Keep, that would be wondrous as well. Um, and I think you guys, it's still in the Discord. Uh, so if you yes. check in there, you will be able to see it. Um, your the area where you currently are is in the bottom left corner. You can see that there's like a thin gap where one of the towers once was, and there's this huge chunk that's been sort of like broken down the center of it. Um, there are all these bodies stacked up, the smell of which uh, wafts through on the midnight air. Um, it is late at night. Um, you can see that the the moon is above. There are a few clouds providing a bit of ample cover. But this is now over to you guys. What do you want to do here? What's the approach? Um, there are guards patrolling the walls. Wasn't there some sort of check that we rolled right before we stopped? Like Nate rolled something good that we had to remember. Yep. You, I believe it was an athletics check because you were going to uh, climb up towards the keep um and i took nate's check and for the sake of expedience i have determined that you have all successfully climbed up and are now outside of the keep's walls ready to infiltrate and i'm assuming uh mika azara after as a bird you return to the party um, yes. and then that's where we'll pick up basically um did i because i think if i remember correctly two weeks ago was in eternity mm-hmm. um i wanted to see if i could find a pattern to the guards keeping watch. yeah and so there's back. there is not so much a pattern there are basically to give you the breakdown the information um there are four walls on the outside of the keep and each wall has at least two guards patrolling mm-hmm. it they look to be quite common thugs the kind of thugs that you've dealt with on the roads these do not look like elite troops they they are just posted sentries basically they carry torches or lanterns and they're just keeping an eye out looking out onto the you know any areas that could be approached Um, The main area that they're focusing on is the front of the keep, which is the uh, eastern wall with a path that leads down the steep hillside. The rest of the keep is kind of protected because it's on a raised hill. So there's actually quite a steep, flat incline 
um, that people would have to climb up to approach from that end. So they're not too worried about those areas. Um, each of these centuries just kind of passes. It's easy to guess their kind of timing and things like that. Mm -hmm. It would still be difficult to move past them. Um, they will need to be either distracted or taken care of or disabled in some way. Uh, the other thing you would notice, Azara, is outside of the main keep's building in the main tower where you saw the woman, uh -huh. there is a small courtyard where there is a campfire, piled up goods and supplies, and there were three much more vicious looking troops there. They seem to be much better armed. You could tell that they had this um, black tattoo of vines and thorns up okay. one of their arms. Um, they looked quite dangerous. Um, Did I see the woman notice me and her eyes flash green? I mean, it was a split second. I, I leave that to you to decide whether she saw you or not in your mind. All right. Um, well, for the sake of expediency, I would convey everything that I saw and all the patrols and the specificities of the tattoos to the rest of the group. Sure. Uh, yeah. And our main goal was to kind of get to like this throne room for lack of a better way to describe it where what's his um, face was there i believe that the the main goal was to take out the leadership which would be yeah. the thorn hand uh and this this woman perhaps this mage you were told that there was a mage um that right. had helped them take the keep and based on what azara saw you could assume that that is her um they seem to be the ones who are leading this group and they definitely seem to have some sort of intimidation factor over the rest of the thugs. Taking care of them will certainly uh, make it much easier. There are troops. Um, there are a ba there is a there's a couple of barracks in this keep, and the majority of their troops must be in there sleeping. It is late at night. You know that they have far more forces than just the sort of you know seven people you can see in the keep right now. Um, so alerting guards would perhaps be dangerous uh if you are if you don't take care of them but really this is over to you guys now um sunrise is a few hours away you have some time um to decide what you would like to do has it been over an hour since our carriage situation probably by the time it took you to make your way to the keep climb up with uh marcel's excellent athletics leading the way um and azara's scouting mission i'm gonna say yes your pass without a trace okay. hour has passed but you are still hidden. Right. There's, there's no threat of you being detected until you choose to do something. Um, and for clarity, we're kind of at this bottom right-hand broken tower entrance, right? Uh, yes, bottom right. Yeah, sorry. I'm yeah. really bad. And then the and right. mage, Azara just told us, is in the bottom left tower. Bottom left tower. And then the main building is top left. The camp you can see just below, below that in the sort of keeps courtyard. There's a little mm. campfire and some broken wagons. And that's where these more vicious looking troops seem to be stationed. Uh, and there's a what? break in the wall over there by the tower. And guards are guarding that or not? They seem to be, yeah. The three elite looking fellows are watching that entrance specifically. Does it look uh, like we could climb up the outside of the tower? You could certainly try. Uh, how do Marcel and Tarkal feel about all of this? That's what I would like to know. Oh, if you saw the mage and she was alone, and she's one of the two halves we need to take out, maybe we should just go for her first while she's alone? But she's not alone. She's surrounded by guards in her tower. Oh, there's guards in the tower, right? Well, okay, right. guards outside the tower in the courtyard watching to make sure that nobody can get to her. If only we had some kind of plan that would have led us straight to her without any conflict. Oh, well. Tarkal hangs his head. <laughs> Marcel, do you need to talk about this now? Is this something that we need to discuss? That was something we needed to discuss a while ago, so. Well, it seems like it's still really bothering you, and I wouldn't want to go into this situation with conflict between us, as our lives are on the line. Won't get in my way. Do you want to talk about your feelings, Marcel? I'd say fuck that. All right. Since we're all good, let's proceed. Okay. Uh, so from our from our vantage point, can we can we see the layout of the top of the fortress? Yes. So we recognize it matches. 
yeah, it matches the same as this. You recognize the broken elements, uh, the walls. Uh, there is a second floor to the main building. Um, obviously, I'm just showing you guys the full map, but it would probably be made of bedrooms and things like that. Um, you could definitely get on top of the walls. The walls are small ramparts. There are you know, things that you can look over, torch sconces, that sort of thing. Um, the broken parts obviously would need to be jumped across if you wanted to try and traverse those. Um, but I think like Tarkle, you, you've kind of hunted game and things like that before. The guards who are patrolling around, in theory, you could take care of them quietly. Um, you probably couldn't take care of all of them by yourself, but you know, these guys don't look particularly tough. Uh, you reckon that as a group, you can probably try and take out the sentries if you wanted to. The three in the courtyard are the ones who look like they would be tougher, uh, more difficult to deal with. That would probably be a full-on battle if you were to engage them. Um, for the purposes of mechanics, by the way, things like minions that are guards, I'm not going to give them hit points and things like that. Like If you do successful skill checks, you can just eliminate them. I am, I'm going to track your successes and your failures secretly. Uh, there is a, an alert level where if you do fail too many times, perhaps the guards will become alerted to what's going on. Um, but if you also succeed in taking them out, you won't have to worry about things like reinforcements and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, things like skill checks, like if you make a stealth check, you might be able to eliminate one of the patrols. Azara might be able to use magic to kind of misdirect them or put them to sleep or something like that. You don't even need to necessarily have the specific spells. I'm quite happy for you to kind of almost run this like a bit of a skill challenge so feel free to just use your skills creatively um if you want to take out the the tower the wall guards yeah uh, i was think i was thinking we do that we take it and try to go the long way sure that is a great idea brother lead the way make the plan ah okay. uh, uh, i we should we should we should go along the eastern wall and take out any sentries we see uh until we reach the tower uh not alerting the elite gods in the courtyard. Right? Okay. Uh, before we move, uh, Azara would turn to Tarkle. Your, your grace, if I may speak freely. Um, <laughs> the woman in the tower is not, is not dumb. Whichever mage we face already knows of our presence. The closer we get to her, the more at risk we are, whether her guards see us or not. I think that taking out the guards in between is a good idea. However, we cannot assume that her personal guard are not already waiting for our arrival. So we should just be ready for a battle, whatever may come. Yes, it's, it sounds like you can keep a good eye on the tower as we're crossing the wall and alert us if you see anything specifically, any, any commotion. All right. Okay. So it sounds like Tarkle, you're gonna be kind of taking, leading this thing to start with. What's mm -hmm. Tarkle's kind of approach here? Is it like clamber up the walls, sneak along and try and stealthily like slit throats or like knock people out? Like what's what's Tarkle actually going to approach this? Um, so with the sentry layout, so if, if Tarkle's climbing up, if he's mm -hmm. on the wall, I'm assuming is there one on each of those rectangular squares on the east um, side? Not necessarily, yeah. They, they're kind of moving between the two. Uh, there's like a wooden sort of bridge that they can cross. But yeah, the, effectively, in terms of there's there's two guards on that section. So how you take care of one, uh, there would still be another one left to, to deal with. Um, okay. You reckon you can sneak up on one easily enough, uh, but somebody else will probably need to take out the other one. Okay, so you don't think it would be possible for me to sneak up on one, slit mm -hmm. their throat with my uh, silver, and then toss mm -hmm. my dagger into the throat of the other across the way? I mean, you can certainly try. <laughs> I think Tarkles really, really wants to try to have another successful plan of his own, so he's just gonna, he's gonna try to do that. Okay. Since Agnes gassed right. him up a little bit. Perfect. Well, the first thing you're gonna need to do is climb up this wall, which is a, a kind of like, you know, flat keep stone wall. Now it is partially broken. Uh, so that is gonna be an athletics check I would like you right. to make for me, please. Three. Uh, 15 total. 15. So kind of carefully under the cover of moonlight, Tarkle begins making his way up. Um, maybe a couple of loose stones kind of crumble down, but not enough to alert anybody to your presence. And you slink your way up and the rest of you kind of look up as Tarkle's form crouches down. Uh, and you can see one of the guards just kind of spitting over the side of the wall down towards the uh, pathway, kind of sneering and looking down the path, squinting in the night. Uh, and yeah, if you want to try and sneak up on him and take a, a blade to the throat uh that is going to be a stealth check my friend okay uh, stealth you got 10. this ho, 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 ho. 
Uh, Ooh, can I give 10, him 21. guidance? Oh, you don't need uh, it. He's already right left here. up the wall, I'm afraid. So, yeah. Uh, what was that? 21? 21, yeah. Okay. So, Tarkal, you move up, and the rest of you see this flurry of movement. And Tarkal kind of dashes forward and grabs the man um, and is bringing the blade down. Uh, when I would probably say uh, Marcel and Agnes, you mm. notice that one of the guards on the southern wall has turned and is beginning to kind of rotate their way back towards you uh, and is in danger of spotting what Tarkal is doing. What do the two of you do? How far is this this other guard? Let's say uh, he's probably about sort of 20, 30 feet up and then making his way. So he's, about, he's within about 40 feet, I would say, 30 feet. 30 feet, let's say. Sweet. Can I misty step behind him and like oh, yeah. try to cover Ooh. his mouth and then just give a slit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you're spending a spell slot, I'm even going to make you make a, a chest for it. You basically... Whoosh, so what does it look like when Marcel uses misty step? Is there like a particular visual you, you want? Um, Just kind of like a, like a translucent, like uh, aqua bluish green glow. And then just like... Mm -hmm. It's really dim. It's not enough to alert someone. It's not uh -huh. like, look, light, and then just appears behind <laughs> them. And I'll, yeah. I'll just nothing personal kid him. And just, <laughs> just. Uh, so the blade kind of comes up, and uh, there is a brief moment where you do hear in your mind, like, oh, okay, and then <laughs> the the crimson spray um, as the blade cuts deep. And you, I would have done it with. You know, wait, do I have? Do I have? Do you have a, a dagger? I have a short sword. I would have done it with that. Okay, so you do it in that. In that case, yeah, mm -hmm. nothing. In that case, no, no voice uh, comes through. But instead, you just hear this kind of, <gasps> kind of gasp for air as you then place your mouth, uh, hand over the guy's mouth, and drag him down. Tarko, you silently take care of the guard that you were with, um, and now you are kind of left in this this brief moment where you are now sort of both waiting for the moment to pass to take the next steps. Um, so I think Tarko was going to throw a knife at another nearby guard. Agnes and Azara, you can see that there is a light in the tower where Azara saw the mage, like a bobbing lantern, like somebody moving around. And that lantern is beginning to progress along the inside the sort of uh, wall, the, the western wall, um, heading towards the larger square building. Um, somebody is moving inside. Um, does it look like they're moving because they're alerted or they're moving just because they're just taking a stroll? Make an insight check for me. I can do. Let's see if what your read on the situation is. 19. 19. There's no hurry to the movement. Okay. It's, it's a very gentle bobbing, like somebody just carrying a lantern, making their way to their bedchamber or uh, visiting somebody. Just very casual, not, not rushed. Um, um, I will want to tap Agnes on the shoulder mm -hmm. and just kind of like put a, a finger to my lips to be quiet but like point it out and just wait to see who comes out of the mm -hmm. door because it looks like they're coming to enter the courtyard correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. I just want to kind of uh, wait because if yeah, it's like a, wait... a housekeeper don't want to kill him yeah well yeah. you wait for a few seconds uh -huh. and emerging from the door as the other two as Marcel and Tarkal are kind of you know, taking down their targets and pressing them down, uh, not to alert anybody. Agnes and uh, Azari, you see the door to the courtyard opens, and stepping out is very clearly a feminine form, uh -huh. green cloak draped over her body, big uh, green hood carrying a single lantern. Um, you see her just walk up to the three by the campfire, whisper in their ear, and then just casually make her way uh, into the large main building itself. Um, I immediately cast message towards mm -hmm. Tarkal and towards uh, Marcel, and mm -hmm. I tell them, the mage knows we're here. She's alerted her guards. Be careful. Okay. Does message do do? let us communicate back? I Does believe you can reply. Mm -hmm. Okay. I send back, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what did Tarkal and Marcel do? So you receive this message, you kind of say that back, but is there like, do you, do you immediately try and hide yourselves? Do you try and like make your way back to the others? What's What do you do in that moment? Uh, I mean, I guess 
as quickly as I can, I look to see if the soldiers in the courtyard are moving in my direction, like if their heads are turning or any indication that they're getting up from their campfire. Okay. Um, so if I... so Taco kind of risks a glance towards the courtyard to see what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Marcel? Uh, I like so... doing this where I don't give you an answer until I know what <laughs> So we're kind of on the bottom right still, right? Yes. Yeah, you are. You're at the very at the top of the wall. Taco is at the top of the, the uh, right-hand wall. Agnes and Azara are down, uh, kind of looking through the gap into the courtyards. Gotcha. And with my uh, with my misty step, I'm still on the ground level, right? I didn't teleport up. You would have had to, to take care of the guard because he was on the wall. Oh, so he was on so the wall. So I am up yeah. there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, uh oh. But you're hidden. I'm, you know, nobody spotted you yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and just stay stealthy and. Sure. Keep an eye on the party, but check. also like keep uh, progressing. Stealth check, you said. Sure. Stealth check, please. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, what does Agnes do while Nate's making? I'm going to start me? climbing up behind Tarkal. Okay. To just give him backup support. Sure. Give me a, an athletics check for you as well, please, Agnes. Nate, stealth. Eight, Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Sure. Uh, I get a. What? I have minus one to athletics. You've, no, you're, a, you've, rolled... you know, growing up in the woods, but yours was like, a, you know, going summer camp. You didn't really do a lot of the sort of hard living, I imagine. Couldn't I roll a dexterity check to climb a wall? I think that it is more of a physical strength. If you were trying to balance along a wall, if you were trying to kind of, um, you know, something like that, like swing on a rope or a chandelier, sure. This is like a physical, like climbing up upper body strength, uh, trying to do it. I get an 11. An 11, okay. Uh, you succeed. You don't not fail to climb the wall, but as you do a larger, good, a larger rock kind of <laughs> kind of falls down. As you climb up Taco, you glance into the courtyard and Azara, you're carefully watching it from what you've mm -hmm. seen. The guards don't move. They just kind of grunt and, <sighs> and sort of turn their attention and sort of begin whispering to each other. Um, but there's no immediate rush to raise an alarm or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Almost like, yeah, they weren't told anything particularly anything. alarming. I don't trust that. Um, and she went the, she's gone now into like the castle, castle part of the keep, yes. like where the thorn hand is probably. Where you believe so, yes. Where yeah. we believe, okay. Um, huh. You, at least two more centuries remain in this area. Oh, can I see any of them? They are on the walls, yeah. So they are making their way. One looks like if they turn around, they're going to start making their way towards Marcel. Um, the other one is the one that Tarkel was about to whoosh, lob a dagger towards before uh, your message arrived. Can I carefully get within 15 feet of this guard that's heading sure. towards Marcel? And uh -huh. uh, I would like yeah, to you kind of run along the base of the wall. Yeah, I want to lightning lure him off the wall and just Down. kind of smash yeah. him into the ground. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, as that's a cantrip, make an yes. arcana check for me. So, Oh, I, gladly. I, yeah. This is your kind of mastery oh, of God. arcane matters. 20, 23. So yeah, you Whoa. kind of lob the lightning lure up. It latches onto his neck. You yank it down. You hear something crack. Uh, mm. And then the body just goes <laughs> and slams onto the ground dead still. Just impacts oh. down um yeah perfect um so now yeah the you doesn't appear to be any alarm raised still nobody seems to know you're here the night is silent what's the next steps if i didn't notice any like they didn't move then i'm just going to continue to i want to toss my kiss of silver towards the guard that's across the way make a ranged attack so uh, make an attack with the daggers if you were throwing at them for gotcha. me Ooh, uh, 19 plus 7, so 26. You just hear a very faint, like, oh, and then the body just slumps down, slides off the front gate, and thump into the dirt below. Nice. Um, and, yeah, you can see that whilst the other walls do have some sentries, you're easily able to move into the courtyard now, no longer fear of being detected. And you can still see that the three uh, well-armed-looking troops are just sort of milling about, uh, one of them appears to be shuffling a deck of cards. 
One of them appears to be eating something, uh, some sort of jerky perhaps, um, but they show no signs of alert. Uh, you can hear sounds of snoring coming from the barracks uh, along the southern wall um, and the sound of, of you know, grunting and sleeping coming from uh, the building to the north as well. Um, I want to take this opportunity since thank goodness message is a cantrip <laughs> to send a message to all three of them and ask, are we, are we planning on taking them out? I want to send that to all three of them because they can message back. You said, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You can reply to this message. I'd prefer not to, if we can avoid it. I thought we were going for the mage. I didn't hear anything. Um, I still think we should walk along the top of the wall and make it to the main uh, courtyard, main rooms without going through the courtyard if possible. Because there's a door on the inner east, well, I guess it's the top right of the top building, right? Yes, yes. Okay. It leads out onto the walls. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, if there's no objections to that plan, uh, yeah. without any alerts, the fact that you guys have taken care of these primary sentries, uh, Azara, you are helped up onto the wall. Marcel, you're already on. It's just a quick sort of like hop across. And yeah. th as a group, go on. Uh, I want, so I'm like by the barracks, right? You are, yeah. And I hear like snoring from there. Oh, yeah. Does it sound like yeah. lots of lots of guards? Oh, yeah, like I mean, you know, you only hear the individual snoring, but looking at the size of the building, quick estimate in your head, maybe sort of ten, nine, ten, twelve individuals could probably sleep in there. Um, is there is there an entrance on the wall I'm by? Oh no. There isn't an entrance on the wall. No, there is a staircase leading down. Um, and then there appears to be like a, a front entrance and then maybe like an armory attached to the back. Uh, but there isn't, from where you are, there isn't a way down into the barracks themselves through the wall. But the staircase leading down would bring me right to those three dudes, right? Um, it would put you in sort of the, the, the front area of the keep. You'd still have some distance, but there would be a risk that they would spot you, yes. Especially okay. opening a door and stepping inside, that's, yeah, there would definitely be a chance that you could be spotted. Okay, disregard then. Okay. So the plan is you guys meet up and begin making your way along the walls, as Tarkal suggested, and then going into the main building of the keep itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Under the cover of night with the moon casting this silvery glow, your feet just make that gentle tapping as you make your way across the stone battlements of the keep. You spot a couple of figures sort of moving down in the courtyard, the three troops uh, by the front gates. But you seem to be undetected. Uh, reaching the door that leads inside the keep, uh, Tarkal, you do notice uh, it is locked um, as you kind of rattle the door handle. There is a staircase that leads down back into the sort of main courtyard. Um, what would you like to do? Can anyone pick this lock? <laughs> I would be the one that should be able to do that, shouldn't mm -hmm, I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is it a lock that seems like I can pick, or does it feel like when I jiggle it, does it feel like it's barred with like a piece of wood? Uh, I imagine a door like this, you suspect would be barred from the inside. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't try and find a way to open it. There are like thin edges around the side. Um, you could certainly try. You could use like your thieves tools to try and sort of like lift the bar from, from one side. Um, What do you guys think? Do you think we should try this way or go in another? What does the store look like it's an entrance to? Um, this would probably lead into an upper section of the keep or maybe into some sort of um, room that would have a staircase that leads up, maybe like an entry hall or something like that. Um, are there any other ways or is it just this hallway with the store? You can see that above the door there is a thin arrow slit window, but not big enough for a normal creature to fit through. Um, maybe big enough for somebody to, uh, a gas or something like that to go through, or a very small animal, like a tiny creature could slip through. Um, hey, oh, the door is made of wood, if Agnes would like to burn it down. Uh, I will <laughs> make Agnes, that clear. Agnes was specifically like, kind of like twirling some fire on her fingertips. Like, sure. Seeing that, Azara is going to put her hand on her hand first and say, <laughs> How about we look through the window to make sure that we don't burst into a room full of enemies? 
True. And we don't want to burn down the whole keep. It's important to the city. Oh, it's potentially also going to be a good house. <laughs> so, uh, cool. Any, kind of any look thoughts? at Tarkal, figuring he can climb up higher than any of us can. Oh, I, I do have three inches on everyone. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I can try to peek through the window to see what we would be getting ourselves into if we try to bust through this door. Sure. I mean, with all of you there, like, you know, depending on... Uh, you tell me, would Marcel offer a boost if one was requested? <laughs> like a sort of like a little ho hoik tarkle up? Um, Possibly. On our way here, did any of the guards we dealt with, are their bodies like up on this level? So the one that Tarkal killed would be up on the wall. The one that you killed would have been up on the wall as well. Um, the one that Tarkal threw the knife at and the one that Azara uh, lightning lured were pulled down to the ground. So they are not up on the walls. Okay. And would I be able to get back to one and come back without any real problem? Or would I need yeah, to like... Yeah, sure. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. easy. You can go cool. to the one that Tarkal uh, uh, first killed. Easy. Sweet. I want to put on his uniform. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take long. They don't really have much of a uniform. These guys are like bandits. You can see that they've pilfered some of the um, cloaks from the Cormirian troops here. Um, they've got like ratty armor, sort of leather and hide mixed together. Wouldn't be too difficult to kind of slip that over over your own tunic, pull up the hood on the cloak. Um, yeah, easily enough. It's not really even much of a uniform, but it would do enough to hide your own gear well enough to put on their cloak and armor. Sure. Extra layer of of like stealth sure yeah absolutely yeah yeah so you kind of uh whilst the others are kind of discussing the door you slip back grab a few things um you kind of have to unbuckle the armor it takes you you know a couple of minutes maybe um but mm -hmm. then you return to the rest uh and you can see yeah marcel has, has pulled off some of this gear uh, from this body and marcel I... can you give me a hand here um sure I think actually insti instinctively, I think Tarko would actually get down and like oh, try to, to boost, boost Marcel. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh. Yeah, that works. Marcel we'll takes it. Mm. Uh, you lift Marcel up and Marcel, when you look through, you can see that from this doorway, uh, the little Aris that looks down, it's actually quite a, quite a pretty room. Um, it looks to be maybe some sort of display room. Uh, there are suits of armor along either side. Um, most of it's been sort of broken and ransacked, but the stands are still there. Some of the helmets, there are a few tapestries, um, elegant rugs that run through the room. No guards that you can see. Um, you don't spot anything that could be alarms or traps or runes or anything like that, but it is only a quick glance. All right, I'll convey that I don't really see anything that's an immediate threat. Mm-hmm. What if I just burn right around the lock? Like just like right around, just right here. Can you control your fire that well? Uh, I mean, let's see. I can you hear. Hurl, I hurl a moat of fire at an object. So how big is a moat? I'd say fist sized. Hurling yeah. is also quite a violent sort of like Neat. That's true. It'd be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, it's not a very uh, subtle effect, I think. However, as you are contemplating this, Agnes, you do hear that coming from the uh, the courtyard where you saw these three troops. Um, one of them is beginning to get up, kind of stretching his legs. Where's and he's looking towards the wall where the two uh, sentries, uh, the front wall, the two sentries you took out. He's like peering in the distance, as if trying to see, like. Where are they? Um, Do I hear this? I mean, you see it. You're kind of like all hidden on like this little uh, wall by this door. There's a stairway leading down and you see him as he kind of steps out into the main courtyard. Like yep. you can see this kind of scrawny, weaselly looking fellow kind of looking up like, where are they? <laughs> um, can what about a distraction? Can I cast Minor Illusion to make it sound like there are guard footsteps walking on the ramparts? <laughs> nice. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because oh, I can't make it as big as a guard, unfortunately, but I would like to uh, make it sound like there's, you know, 
Yeah. I think that that just works. I think, yeah, you, you kind of conjure the sounds of like, you know, boots on stone and maybe like a cough and things like that. And it's a cantrip, yeah. so you can keep doing it. Yeah. Um, and he, you can see the guy peers and he's, he kind of looks for a second. He's like, oh, fuck this. And then he goes back to the campfire and pulls out a little flask of something and takes some swigs. You've bought yourself some time um, until they uh, investigate further for sure. Dope. What do you guys like to do? While we're deciding on the door thing, um, yeah. with my disguise, I want to try and sneak over to the entrance to the barracks. Sure, yeah. So you just kind of cross the courtyard in front of mm -hmm. these guys and make your way to the barracks. Sure. I'd, I'd still I... like to try and stealth. Sure. Give me a stealth check, man. Please roll one. Nat 20. Oh. Yeah. They don't even notice. Um, whatever the, the distraction from Azara has kind of alleviated their mind enough that as you just silently pad your way across the courtyard, they just don't even look up. They're not expecting any trouble. Um, and you arrive at a pair of thick wooden doors that lead into a narrow stone room, and you can hear that snoring coming from inside. Um, cool. Um, what's what's the handles on this like? What's the lock situation? Doesn't appear to be locked. I mean, it wouldn't. It probably wouldn't make a lot of sense for this to be locked. They want to be able to get in and out of it quite quickly. Um, just looks to be a handle. Just looks like you you open it up and push in. Is it like a like a double door handle type thing? It is. Yeah, it's it's a pair of double doors. So swings um, pulls out. I imagine. Cool. I'm gonna take my sword and just like <laughs> jam it in there. Okay. Just to lock yeah. It. Uh, your the the sword. I'm assuming, by the way, or your short sword. The sword. The sword. Okay. Yeah. So this elegant long sword, you kind of slide mm -hmm. in. Um, you probably do hear a. Are you leaving me here? It's like, you let me know if anything goes wrong, and you'll be you'll be right with me. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, I'll keep an eye on them inside. Uh, well, keep an eye is not the right word. You know what I mean. Keep, uh, keep a <laughs> keep a vibe. You yes. Know, yes. Check the I vibes. Will. Okay. Yes. Uh, just if you need me, call me to you. Will do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, you, you, uh, do you sneak back to the door with the others? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what, whilst Marcel is gone, what are the three of you doing? Hey, Mark. Yeah. Hey. Can Mage Hand go through that tiny window up top? Oh, and then lift the bar? And then lift the bar? Yes, that's nice. Smart. That's really good. So that's yeah. that's that's what I that's so what I want to do. So Tarkle would have to boost you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question is, Tarkle, this and and I think Mika, this is Azara is dressed in a very sort of uh, I don't want to use the term sensual, but you know, a kind of sensual, provocative yes. manner, <laughs> right? How does how does Tarkle feel as Azara is like? I need a boost up. <laughs> is this like? <laughs> is is he nervous? Is this embarrassing? I don't know. I want to know. Uh, I think he's definitely not used to boosting women that are dressed this way. No, yeah. So he's probably he's probably he, pretty blunt. He usually he's like, boosts women that are covered in more clothing. <laughs> yes, yeah. But, well, in the woods, you never know when someone needs a boost, right? Like, so yeah, true. exactly. <laughs> Aim in the tree. I mean, not that Agnes no, uh, would know. Um, but yeah, so I think he would probably get pretty flushed, but then like just kind of look down and put his hands out like this, the booster, but like, like not like looking her way. Yeah, like a gentleman. Um, yeah. Was that how? Yeah. Does Azara find that funny? I'm not kind of interested in Azara's oh, reaction. Azara is so used to this reaction from men. She just kind of chuckles uh, nice. and and shakes her head like, oh, poor little prince boy. Oh. Yeah. And then whoop, you're lifted up then, with yeah. mage hand. You see the, is it like a draconic claw, the mage hand? Because yeah. it has like a physical form. It, yeah, it's, so it's kind like of a draconic like this claw. Weird, scaly looking, shimmery hand, and it comes down. And yes. I feel like and it just would, lifts it up. One claw would just lift it up. <laughs> yeah. And you feel the door give way, ready to be opened. Uh, yeah. Easy. So Marcel rejoins, and yeah, the door opens up, and you can see it leads down. There's a short stone staircase, and it leads into, yeah, a kind of almost like a decorative room with suits of armor on one side. Um, you can see the tapestry, the coat of arms of House Evenhand, who were the previous lords of Evening Star, uh, is on, along the walls. And there appears to be a door at the end of the corridor. Um, it's maybe about sort of like 30 feet long. From here, can we, can we go can check I that door too? Oh, go ahead. Uh, from here, I can, I, I still have, you know, reception 
to my sword, yes. right? I can yes, okay, you do, yeah. just making sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as you're attuned, you, you you haven't really tested the range, but it's quite far. Okay, cool. Is there anything else in this hallway, or is it just hallway door? Uh, suits of armor along either side. There is um, a couple of long rugs in the middle uh, that go down the center of the room. Um, wall sconces, uh, all not lit. A um, couple of windows, like the arrow slit one you used to look down into. That's about mm -hmm. it. You don't see anything, unless you'd like to look more thoroughly. Um, I think I'll just point out the window and say, okay. we should take another look before going in. Oh, that'd be the one that you looked in to unhook it and the one that Marcel looked oh, into. So, is there yeah. no other one you said down the hall? There are, but they face outside the keep. Oh, so, so there's, there's not none anything... above the other door? No. No, no, no. That's just a door that leads into a That's new room. That's just the door. Great. Yeah. Cool. Never mind then. I take that back. Cool. Is it open? It. Uh, the door on the other side of the room is not open. It is closed. But it doesn't look like it locks. It looks just like an interior door. I guess, like, dressed kind of on brand here i'll like take a subtle step through just sure. to like gauge it's super super casual don't be suspicious don't be suspicious just don't be suspicious you walk through and the only discontent is the presence of the feeling of being watched as these suits of armor uh just with blank visors stare at you as you make your way down this corridor kind of almost anticipating some sort of trap or rune. Each footstep feels like an eternity until you are at the end of the corridor with a simple wooden door in front of you. And this is, is this the, uh, wh wh which door am I at at this point? Um, so if you look at the main key, it's, it's, it separates the two rooms. So it's at the end of the hallway between the suits of armor. You've come from the walls, um, and then oh, about thirty feet in front of you, there's just a little wooden door. Oh, we're going to nice. We're going. So yes. I'm at that door. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna like. Oh man. <laughs> Oops. Can I can I see like what I perceive about these armors? Is do sure. I have any kind of like gut feeling? Make, or... You can you can make an investigation check if you want to examine them, or if you just want to look at them, it's perception. Let's go. This is where everyone's just like, it's traps. It's going to be traps. Is there traps? <laughs> These 16, suits of armor are going to come traps. alive. They're going to kill us. 16. 16. Mm -hmm. A cursory glance without the knowledge of your swords being able to sort of uh, give you any further magical indications. There, you don't see any mechanisms. You don't see any runes. You don't see anything that would bring them to life or cause any traps. As far as you can tell, they're just decorative suits of armor. But you said we feel like we're being watched. Yeah. Can I do like an arcana check just to see if I feel anything magical about these sure. these bad boys? Sure. Oh, that's a solid nine. That's not great. It could just be a trick of the imagination. It could just be that you're expecting to feel watched and so yeah. you are. Hmm. What's Agnes doing? This is taking an awfully long time for Agnes. I imagine there's a bit of a sort mm -hmm. of like. No, she's just in. like following. She's following at the ready, basically. So yeah. the door that she's at is not open now. Uh, no, the main door leading into this room okay. is is open, but then it's the one at the other end of the corridor. So past all these suits of armor, where you can see Marcel is kind of looking around. Um, he's at this uh, door at the other end of the corridor. Yeah. So she's basically just following at the ready. Okay. For insight, I'm planning on summoning my wildfire spirit as soon as I need to, but it's made of fire, sure. so I'm trying to be sure. discreet about it. Okay. So, like, there's no ready action, but if there is sure. a ready action um, in her mind, it is summon fire spirit. <laughs> perfect, yeah. You don't hear anything. You don't hear the presence of any other creatures in the room beyond. You don't hear anybody moving around or breathing or anything like that. Um, it appears to just be empty, which is kind of weird. I'm going to take yeah. my short sword and mm -hmm. stab it through the face of one of the suits of armor. Clang. You just hear it hit metal. Good check, though. I, I think it's clear. Can I, can I insight w w what's going on here? Like, is it normal that there's nobody here? Or, like, should I be aware that, like, this probably means something's afoot? 
I think that that's not even a check. That's just Anna as as Agnes. You think what you think. Like you know, it probably it is weird. It does seem weird that there's nobody here. But then also these are thugs. Like maybe they're they're not allowed to be in here because this thorn hand. Maybe maybe everyone's dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I will keep just following Marcel. Sure. Taco, Azara, anything? Um. Do I have to be in combat to use my sorcery points to restore no. a spell slot? Not at all. Cool. No. It's so just bone section. to restore my uh, level, f- my fourth level spell slot, that's four sorcery points, right? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think so. Um, I trust you to look it yeah. up. I mean, it's all in Dindy Beyond. If you go into the features tab, it will tell you what yeah. it is. But well, I'm going to cool. do that real you quick. You figure that out. I'm going to do that real quick just to get it back. Sure. Okay. Taco. Uh, I think having seen Marcel check out the door and him saying it looks clear as far as the room, uh, I would just proceed mm-hmm. to the door as well and kind of uh, mm-hmm. since Marcel's in this in this disguise now, just like mm-hmm. encourage him to peek open the door. So if he's spotted, at least he can maybe put on a good show. Claim. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, I'd I'd probably once I see everyone's kind of following suit, I I don't like peek into the door. I would just open it so I can you know go through. A, a balance between casual but also observing because i don't want to be like sure. hey, am, am i allowed in here so yeah yeah no yeah so looking through it is empty it leads into a corridor it's not going to quite match up the map because you're on the second floor mm-hmm. um and i didn't draw a second floor uh <laughs> there is a, a corridor uh there is a couple of doors um leading off from this to the south but at the end there is a stone spiral staircase that leads down um and you can see light coming from below. There's no light in any of the rooms up here, but there is a dull glow like that from a lantern um, coming from below. And the um, it was conveyed that this this uh, this person we're looking for is on the they were on the bottom left tower. You believe so? Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna check the next door. Sure. Yeah, you go through the doors um, and up here, and it appears to lead into bedrooms, um, a bath chamber, one of them, um, all empty. None of them have people or signs of life. A lot of things like the blankets have been taken. Anything of sort of value, candlesticks have all been taken. Um, But the rooms themselves are just left bare and empty. Uh, Bath chamber, you know, a bathtub, but not much else. yeah, that's it. And then just this stone staircase leading down. It looks like that the rest of the top half of this keep is meant for things like ser- uh, servant uh, housing and uh, lord's bedrooms and things like that. But there is no sign of life up here. Um, this all appears to just be uh, living living quarters that is not being used. Um, question. When the mage went from the tower to the main keep, did mm-hmm. she go through the first floor entrance? She did, yeah. She went through the ground floor, like the base floor level, yeah. So she would be below you. Oh, so she's in this thing. Yeah. That's where she oh, moved to, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Marcel didn't see that. That's what Azara and Agnes saw, that she moved into this room, into this building. But, but I think the I floor below that. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I misunderstood then. No, it's okay. okay, I'll just wave it's everybody in. Yeah, you guys make your way through, and um, yeah, there is a stone staircase leading down into the lower floor of this main area, this main keep. You were told to make a show, right? I say kind of like half to Agnes mainly, um, because I believe our... I I always forget her name. I'm the worst. I have to open up my notes. Um, But our person that took the prisoners back said, make a show of taking out the two uh, leaders here. Well, the thorn hand and the witch. So mm-hmm. I think we should just head downstairs. Uh, Elissa is her name. Elissa, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Elissa. Are you guys cool if we just? Are you cool if we just head downstairs and take out this witch and thorn hand? Don't you think there'll still be a lot of guards? Well, if we kill them quick enough, we can have the guards on our side. That's true. All right, is everyone ready? Once you cut off the head of the snake, the rest of it is ours. So let's let's go for it. All right, I summon my wildfire spirit. Yeah, if I can, I want to try to like stealth and see if I can peek down first. Yeah, I mean, you could go down first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Okay. 
So while everyone's getting ready, Marcel moves head. Uh, give me a stealth check, Marcel, as you make your way down. 14. 14, okay. You creak down. Um, and it's not... I don't even necessarily think that uh, it, it's anything you've done wrong. Like, Marcel moves quietly. You stick to the shadows. But as you reach the bottom of this stone staircase, you see that there is a, an open door. It appears to be maybe leading into a kitchen. There's a large open door to the south that leads into a dining hall. Um, there's a big fireplace, and that's where the source of light is coming from. It's been lit um, as if somebody was expecting visitors. Uh, the table is laden with gold, with trade goods, with valuables. Um, not necessarily jewels, but you can see things like expensive set of scales, um, expensive looking clothing, silks, fabrics, furs wine casks and it's all been laid on the table like some sort of great big treasure pile and sat in a chair looking at the pile of gold or uh, not quite a throne but a very regal noble's chair um you see a grizzled man maybe in his 30s kind of short beard scars long dark hair and you can see this tattoo all over his neck crawling down one of his arms of this spiraling black vine with thorns on it. Um, and in his hands, he's holding a very large, wicked-looking axe with a similar sort of vine design carved through the blade. And you just see him, and he just is staring at the treasure, all laden out on the table. Mm. From, from our descriptions we've heard, we assume that is Thornhand, right? It does sound like the man that you were described. Yes. Okay. And another question, knowing what Azara knows about magic and seeing what happened to Agnes's magic, would I put two and two together that this mage is probably affecting Agnes's magic? I mean, it could be. <laughs> I it, That sounds like if Azara wants to believe that, that's something that I think, yeah, would make sense for Azara. Um, is the handle makes of sense. the axe made of wood? Uh, it is, yeah. Marcel's the only main, main one who's made his way down. Marcel's the only one who's seen this, so okay. he's stealth down. The rest of you are still above. So if you want to just make a rush down, by all means. Has, has he taken notice of me? Doesn't seem to be, no. Just seems to be looking at the treasure, brings up one hand, rubs his beard. Mm. I'm going to message think... Marcel and say, what do you see? Sure. Nice. I'll I'll convey. Mm -hmm. He hasn't then, noticed or anything, right? Like he's not like in tune to magic in a way that like he felt something happen. Cool. Doesn't appear to. Cool. Then I'll quietly message to everyone what's up, so everybody's kind of on the same page. I just mm -hmm. want to kind of keep that line of open com communication no happening. <laughs> um, okay. I uh, I think at that point, knowing that he hasn't spotted, I would want to sneak down as well. But at first sight of him, I'm going to toss my dagger uh, towards him, like in his neck, if I can. In that case, you don't even need to make a stealth check because you're just basically going to run down as soon as you see him throw this dagger. Yeah. So, yeah. Marcel, you're in this kind of small kitchen with a, a door to the south. Um, the door's currently open, and that's where you're seeing the table and the fireplace. You're kind of clinging to the shadows. You hear rapid footsteps as Tarkor kind of slides down, th emerges into the kitchen, and then whoosh, this flash of silver comes out. The blade spins through the air, passes through the man as if he wasn't there, and you just hear it ting, and then you just hear a sort of... <laughs> Let's roll initiative. Oh, oh man. man! Two can play Got at the us. illusion game, my friends. Two uh, can play. If the, if the message line is open, I once again convey, fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's not, but you can just think that. <laughs> you can just be like, Fuck. "Yeah, I got my one out of the way. Nice, nice. dude." Oof. I got okay. eighteen total. Eighteen total. Azara, yeah. Marcel, seventeen, seventeen. Taco, twenty. Anna, oh, twenty for Agnes, and five okay. for me. Five for poor Taco. He was the first one who ran down as well. <laughs> Well, Agnes, um, you hear this. You hear your brother run down. You hear the... Uh, and then you just hear this laughter. Um, a man and a woman laughing um, coming from down below. Can I perceive where the laughter is coming from? 
So you move down the stairs. It's probably about 15 feet of movement to get down the stairs. Um, you emerge into the room where the kitchen and you can see this tower. It appears to be coming from a room beyond the, the dining room table, um, probably to the west. Um, but yeah, don't see anybody immediately unless you'd like to move into the room. I want to indicate to my party that I think it's coming from over there. And mm -hmm. I don't want to move into the room, but I want to move to the door to the room and try to look in. Okay, yeah. The the door's open, so the doors are all open. Um, but you kind of slide up to the wall, peer in, giving yourself some cover from whoever's in there. And you can see stood in the corner amongst these shadows, there are these big, thick columns and kind of leaning against one. This time seeing in the flesh the dark bearded man, the thorn hand with this large axe at the ready, kind of getting it ready. You can see him kind of rolling his shoulders, bringing it forward. And stood next to him, uh, kind of a hand placed on his shoulder, is the woman in green uh, with the green hood and the green dress. And you can see she is the one who was briefly controlling the illusion um, as you step forward. How far are they from me standing at this door? Pfft, yeah, let's say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet away from you. Interesting. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for the words. I know. <laughs> I know. I want to do it so bad. I want to do it so bad. <laughs> oh, so bad. So bad. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta set something on fire. Sure. What'd you do, Agnes? I'm gonna cast Scorching Ray. Okay. At the uh, dude. Because uh, he's second... making my magic go wonky, and I don't like it. Okay, so are you casting it second level? No, I changed my mind. I'm I'm casting it at the mage because she's probably making my magic go wonky. Someone's doing it. I'm casting one at each and an extra one at the mage. That's what I'm doing. Okay, give me and those I'm attack rolls. It, yes, at second level. Okay, give me those attack rolls. All right, first is a nineteen. Uh, against the mage woman, we'll hit. All right. Let's do the one against the just... chap. Yeah. Yeah. Do the attack rolls first, and then we'll roll all the damage. This one is fifteen against the dude. Fifth against him, uh, just barely hits him. You can see he tries to throw himself to the side. His arm absorbs some of it, but it still catches him. And the mage, uh, fifteen again. Fifteen will hit all three. So forty-six on her, and then two d six on the thorn hand. Also, because my fire spirit is summoned, this is something I forgot last time. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find... Uh, whenever you cast a spell that deals fire damage while your mm -hmm. wildfire spirit is summoned, roll a d8, and you gain a bonus to one roll of the spell equal to the number rolled. So does yeah. that mean I could add it to the damage? You add it to one of the rays. So you can choose one of the three rays and you add a d8 to that damage, yes. So you could add it to like the I one see. of the ones against the mage, yeah. So you only get okay. the one, even though it's three three rays, but you get it to add it to one of those damage rolls. Okay, so to her, I do fifteen and five is twenty with the first ray. Okay, twenty. To him, I do six. Um. Wait, it was that it's two d six per ray, Anna. So it was forty six for both rays against her, and then two d six oh. against him. Then the first one was twenty total for her. That rays. was for all forty six. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's why I was just yeah, checking. Yeah. And then against him. But, uh, sorry, just checking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Never mind. And then I said six versus to him. six yes. against him. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the first two rays engulf this woman with fire. You feel the heat lick up the side of the, the room as uh, these three bolts of flame erupt into columns, lines, um, and you can see her like kind of flailing her arms. And you can see burn marks all up the dress and against her flesh. And then she just kind of looks down at it and stretches. How I don't like that. Uh, I also get my bonus action with my wildfire spirit. You Sure, um, go for it. How far did you say they were from me again? About 25 feet. Great. So from the door also, my cute little chickadee wildfire spirit goes pew pew with a flame seed. <laughs> um okay and and that'll be against the dude 
And that okay. is, I believe, 1D8. Let me just double check. Uh, after Agnes, by the way, Azara, you're up, then Marcel. So have a think about what you guys want to do. Yeah, yeah. I always forget where the the wildfire spirit stuff is in my um it's normally an extra um stat block so i think you might need to get it up it is but the stat block is oh there it is it's under my actions okay there you go i was gonna say if if to speed things up if need be i was just gonna say make a spell attack and then have it do you know 1d8 plus wisdom but it's 1d6 plus three fire damage that's what it is okay, okay. seven seven points so this little seed, um, this little kind of fiery bird, uh, a small dart of fire. You can see he kind of bats it away, but it still scorches some of his uh, hair and beard. Uh, you hear kind of a grunt come from him in a primal form. Um, Azara. Yeah, um, I've been spending this entire time reading up again on elemental spirits. <laughs> um, so I am going to just already go for the big guns and I'm going to re-spend my fourth level spell slot to summon an elemental fire spirit. Do you move Ooh! down the stairs yeah. into the kitchen first? Yeah, okay. I move down the so stairs you move into down. the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and I call what does your fire spirit look like? My fire spirit kind of looks like, like a fire dragonborn. So it's okay. kind of, so it's like... It looks kind of scary, but it's like this weird draconic elemental. knight. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of cool. floating there. So its armor class is 11 plus the level of the spell. So it's 15. Um, sure. Its hit points are equal to the elemental's constitution modifier, which is plus three, plus my spell casting ability modifier, which is plus two. Why are you going to 10 times the spell? Fire is my thing. Okay. Fire so, is my thing. So it's, it's like 40 something. It's, it's 40 sure. something. We'll get that to a second. Um, but it can attack twice. Okay. Um, so that was my turn, and it's in that my initiative. Action. That was my action, and yep. it goes on my initiative. So I want it to hit. I want it to slam the. So it moves up to them. Yeah, it moves up to them, and it pretty just slams the sorcerer twice. Okay. So it's a weapon attack plus four. Okay. Fourteen. Does fourteen hit her? Fourteen will hit her. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and it's 1d10 plus 4 plus the spell's level. So that would be... Maths is fun. 6 plus Learning 4, 10 stuff. plus the spell's level, which is 4. So 14 points of fire damage for the first hit. Okay. And then so up. again, <laughs> roaring flames uh, comes down. Mm -hmm. And then second attack for it, mm -hmm. uh, which is a 16 plus 4, which is a 20, right? That's math. 20 it hit. is 20. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. yep. That will hit. That hits. And then a D10. Six. Nope. That's a nine. Nine plus four plus four. What's nine plus eight? Quick maths. 17. 17. 17, 17 points of fire damage. <sighs> More. This fiery spirit surges forward and brings down these huge flaming attacks. Um, and you can see the mage kind of brings her hands up, but kind of lazily and haphazardly, sort of just trying to block it. The weapon crashes down, and you can see where it's hit her skin. The flesh has burnt away, revealing like thick bark and soil that's now spilling out of her like blood. Um, and she kind of looks at it. The gr the green eyes glow and flash for a moment. Ugh, how disappointing. I was hoping I would last a bit longer. Still. Uh, anything else, Azara? Or is that the end of your turn? Uh, no. For my bonus action... Okay. I'm going to cast Dragon's Breath on myself at the third uh, level. You, yes, because you summoned a spirit, so you can yep. still cast a bonus action spell. Cool. So I'm just going to At the end of your turn, Azara, mm -hmm. the Thorn Hand is going to use one of his legendary actions. Uh, of course he is. And uh, he <laughs> will basically, um, with he kind of brings his arm up and in the direction of Agnes and uh, probably. Probably you, because the two of you are the ones who have thing. He's like, enough. And you watch as the tattoos become these spinning tendrils of like thorn like whips that shoot out um, towards the two of you. Uh, this is going to cost two of his legendary actions to do. Um, Can we have to... like partial cover because we're standing like in the doorway? Because you was are, like, yes. Phew. You are standing okay. in the doorway. Yep. Uh, against Zara, that's going to be a 14 to hit. Does not hit. 
Okay. <laughs> and then against Agnes, that is going to be a 22 to hit. Uh, the partial cover will give you a plus two. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it still hits. So you managed to kind of throw yourself to the side, Zara, but Agnes, this thorn whip kind of rips around you. Um, you're going to take five, seven, 11 points of piercing damage, and you're yanked about 10 feet into the dining hall towards this figure. Um, uh, and you see Agnes that- I was feeling real good about herself for a second, <laughs> and then not as good about herself, and now not good at all about herself. <laughs> <laughs> and you see that this uh, writhing mass of thorny vines kind of slams back into his arm, and then he just rolls his neck and begins bringing the axe up as if to advance on Agnes. Marcel, your turn. Yeah. I want to try and lightning lure the mage. So that's a strength 15. Save okay. For her. Uh, and it's 30 feet range, isn't it? So you can. Oh, it's 15 within. feet. So if she's not within so 15 move feet. 15. Yeah, yeah. You can move, move 10 feet in and then you've, you've got the space. Okay. Strength yeah. saving through for her. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a fail. Okay. So let me roll the damage on that. Uh, 10 lightning damage. 10 lightning damage. Okay. So then, like, as I cast the lore and it latches onto her, I'm pulling her towards me. I like hold my hand up in this, in like mm -hmm. this position. And then my sword that I left at the door, if all goes well, <laughs> she just, yeah, it just like reforms in my hand. And then I just want to like drive it into her using. Yeah. War magic. So as you yeah, get an as you do that, you see that she doesn't resist the lightning lure. It like wraps around her torso. You see the lightning arc over her body, and she just kind of lets herself be pulled. And then she stops dead in front of you as you bring the sword in, and her eyes catch it. And in your head, you hear, "Well, how very interesting! What a curious little thing you have!" As you slam it towards her, make your attack roll. It's like, no. Don't care. <laughs> Does a 13 hit? Uh, 13 will... She had time to cast Mage Armor, so it does not hit her. It kind of... Some sort of invisible barrier around her body kind of glances the blade away um, that you weren't expecting. Um, and she kind of twists and smiles. And you can see that she looks almost like a Cormerian noblewoman. She looks like she would belong in court of some you know, palace or, or mansion, um, dressed very well, and these eyes that just glow with this vibrant green energy. Uh, anything else, Marcel, on your turn? No, that would be it. Okay. Um, her turn, she just kind of goes, well, it's been lovely meeting you all. I'm sure I'll see you all very soon. And she just holds her arms up. Her body just begins falling apart as if made of moss and dirt and vines. And as it does, this thick, noxious cloud erupts in a 20-foot radius, catching everybody. I would like you all to make constitution saving throws, please. As she this just catches, melts This catches me in the mulch. other room? Uh, it would. You are still in the kitchen. Yeah, this okay. kind of fills where uh, she's been pulled towards Marcel. It just gotcha. floods through. I got 22 total. 22. You can take half damage. Agnes. I got 17. 17. Uh, that is going to be full damage for you, I'm afraid. Which was how uh, much? Uh, not, yeah, I've not rolled it yet. <laughs> uh, Shady? 12. Uh, 12. That's a fail. Nate? 11. Uh, that's a fail as well. Uh, so that is 2, 7, currently 10. 14. That is 20 points of poison damage to those who failed and 10 to Azara uh, as this noxious cloud just rolls out of her, this thick green mist from this mulched body that just turns to dirt and moss uh, in front of you. But her body completely evaporates. Uh, you see in kind of rage and frustration, the thorn hand is like, what are you doing? You promised to aid me. Where are you? And he's like calling around. He's like, ah, you pathetic whelps. I'll find that witch. First, I'll deal with you. And he is going to take his turn. And Agnes, he just pushes on straight towards you. Uh, another noble. I'll show you what it means to rule these lands. 
as he brings this great axe down towards you. Uh, that is only going to be... I'm rolling pretty bad on some of these attacks today. That's only a 13 to hit you. Uh, my armor class is 13. Ooh. Ooh. Well, you are going to... As this axe comes slamming down, uh, you are going to take... Do, do, uh, eight points of slashing damage and then six points of poison damage. And oh. I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Also, I don't think I took the damage from the noxious gas. What was that? That was 20 Ugh, for the full okay. damage. That's not good. So this axe comes barreling down, carving a deep sort of gash into you. And you can hear the sounds of people beginning to rush around outside, but so far, uh, there just seem to be what the hell is going on. They're hearing all these noises and stuff. Um, you said Constitution, but yeah, right? Constitution seven three, yeah. Seven, just seven. Seven, just seven. Yeah. Okay, uh, make a note. Until the end of your next turn, you cannot regain hit points. That sucks. Well, mm. not. Uh, as the axe bites into you, there's this kind of almost like a lichen that spreads out from where it touches your skin and it gets inside the wound and you can feel it sapping away some of your strength um, as he, uh, yeah, brings the axe down. Tarkal, you see this man advance on on Agnes and deliver this kind of really brutal-looking blow towards her. What do you do? Um, I want to make sure that I get sneak attack because they're still within five, five feet of each other, right? Agnes is in front of him. Yeah, Agnes is okay. right in front of him. So I just want to like position myself so I can uh, keep distance, but then toss my uh, kiss of silver mm -hmm. towards him, trying sure. to pierce him. Yeah, you can kind of hop over this um, heavy, thick table laden with treasure. You can kind of slide over it and then whip the dagger in his direction. Cool. Um, I'm going to roll for attack then. Sure. No! That's a one! <laughs> oh. oh, man, that's two today for you. Seeing the uh, the strike, it kind of costs you for a moment as you kind of realize the, the brutality of the attack and just throws your aim off just enough uh, that he manages to pull his head away um, just before the dagger would strike it and whoosh, sails past. I'll deal with you soon enough, boy. Uh, so is there anything in this room? Can I use my bonus action to hide? Uh, yeah, they, you could probably leap for like one of the pillars in the main throne room just beyond this one. Um, and try and dash behind those. Yeah, that would be dope. Sure, make a stealth check. Really beating. That's a one! <laughs> oh no. You kind of press yourself up against a pillar, <laughs> hoping that nobody <laughs> will see you. What is that? Uh, but there's dice, dice in done. dice jail, my goodness. These dice are done. Wow. Agnes, uh, the top of round, you can hear now the sounds of um, sort of alerts and cries, like something, something's going on hand but it is your turn i can't regain hit points no not until the end of this turn well then i will make Feel this lichen sapping your strength away about that that sounds good hurting will, sounds good i'm gonna cast fireball um oh no that's an area of effect there's no one else around him right that would be a waste well, you are next to him, um, and if you try to sort of target behind him and around him, you're probably going to catch Tarkle, who dashed to try and hide. Yeah, um, I'm not going to do that. Um... Just drop a fireball. <laughs> Consequences out. be damned. Consequences be damned. I love it. All right. I'm, I'm scorching raying him again. Okay. And I'm going to do it this time. Oh, wait. No, just kidding. I'm going to Scorching Ray him again. But I'm going to do okay. it at third level this time because I'm mad. Okay, sure. All right, so first one is a 24. That will hit. Second one is an 18. That will hit. Third one is a 12. That will not hit. And fourth one is a 16. Uh, hits so three hits so that's 66 and then your d8 for your fire spirit as well that will be 11 15 uh 21 24 29 plus one <laughs> 30 
fire damage. 30 points she... of fire damage. And then a little <laughs> flame scene. And a little... <laughs> from... So kind of just summoning all this flame into your hand, you just direct all of the energy in front of you, bombarding him with these, these rays of flame, um, causing him to kind of stagger back as he kind of grunts and tries to bat at them. Um, anything else on your turn, or is that the whole turn? Yeah, he takes he takes eight more flame damage from my little and then little eight Phoenix more. chick going with a fire seed. Out. <laughs> so just like oh, strikes him in the face, and it, you can see yeah. it turn him. And now you can see there's actually quite a lot of damage. You can see all this burning has like rendered some of his armor like to a crisp. Much of his skin's been burnt and scalded. Um, at the end of your turn, he's going to take another legendary action. Uh, this time to kind of turn around and where Tarkle kind of tried to dash behind and hide one of these thorny whips is going to come flying out of his hands towards Tarkal. Uh, that is going to be a uh, 18 to hit you, I'm afraid, Tarkal. Yeah, that hits. Uh, so that's going to be three, five, six points of piercing damage, and then you are yanked back next to him. Um, as he's just like, oh, I'll deal with the two of you. These are my lands. I'll own them. She promised also- me power. Also, Agnes, after doing all of this fire damage, tries to not make it noticeable, but checks Azara to see if Azara noticed and is impressed. Okay, nice. Yeah, (laughs) okay. Well, funnily enough, it's Azara's go now, so Azara can tell you whether she was impressed or not. Azara is not noticing because she is focusing on the fact that these nobles are being beaten up in front of her face. Crap kicked out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Question. Yes. Tarkal has been pulled in. How close is he? Because you said that he backed up from Agnes. He did, a but bit. he's now the the thorn whip has pulled him right next to. So the you have the the thorn hand, uh-huh. Agnes on one side, Tarkal uh-huh. on the other side of him, uh-huh. and he's kind of in between these two rooms. Is um, there... He's got like a throne room behind him, and then the dining room in front. Is there any way within my movement that I can position myself to use Dragon's Breath so that it only touches him? You would have to choose either Agnes or Tarkal, one or the other. <laughs> Cool. Well, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it still it lasts for a bit, you though. Could. It does, yeah. So I'm going to just kind of leave. It. I'm going to hold it in. I'm going to hold mm-hmm. hold those lightning bolts, lightning bolts down, and I will just cast lightning bolt on this dude because it's a straight line, right? Sure. Uh, yes, you could in theory position yourself so you only hit him with the lightning bolt. Yes, yes I would like to do that, and sure. I would like to cast it at the third. You know what? No, I'm gonna use. Yeah, no, lightning bolts is is more beefy. I'm gonna use lightning bolt. I'm gonna cast it at third level. I'm gonna just zippity zap him. Sure. It's a deck save of thirteen. Thirteen. So. Uh, I fail. I'm gonna use his one legendary resistance to choose to succeed. So he kind of seems to almost sense it and tries to throw himself out. He still takes half damage. Yeah. Um, Which is but six d eight. How much is that? Eight. Uh, eight d eight. Eighty six, yeah, eighty six. So he kind of tries to pull himself away, um, but the lightning bolt is still gonna course through his space. Oh Jesus Christ! Uh, six plus six, plus two for my elemental affinity. So thirty one points of lightning damage. So halved, it goes to fifteen. Yes. So he th- manages to kind of throw himself to the side, but this lightning bolt rends this huge gash down his side. Blasted by the lightning, you can hear the sizzle of flesh as his armor is peeled away, but he just manages to avoid the full blast. Um, and you just and now, hear this kind of like, Argh! My elemental spirit's going to hit him. Sure. Um, um, can you also make a con save for your elemental spirit? Unless, is it immune to poison? It is immune to poison and fire. Then, then you don't need to make a con save. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So that is 12 plus 8. That's a 20 to hit. That's a hit. Yep. Uh, okay. And so then it is 1d10 plus, plus 4. Plus, so 1d10 plus 8. Uh, 5 plus 8 whatever that is 13 like math. 13 so 13 of fire <laughs> gets and slammed by this attack second attack Ooh, that's a nat one plus eight so that's a nine this time he manages to bring the axe up and parry away the strike of the elemental spirit um as he does so 
Uh, Marcel. All right. I've had enough of this guy. Um, Going to fire. Bark. <laughs> sure. Which is a uh, 18 plus seven. That's a hit. Okay. So that is 2d10 damage. Oh, that's that one. Right. Uh, bump. Uh, uh, 12 fire damage. And then I'm going to... Nate, I'm going to stop you there because as the fireball <laughs> races out of your hand, it impacts into his chest and the rend uh, caused by Azara's lightning and all the fire that Agnes has dealt, your blast of flame catches him. And as it hits his arm, you watch as the tattoo of the vines and the thorns burns away from the flames that you've conjured. His body turns to turn black and crisp in the area where you've struck him. And his axe just breaks into pieces, like pieces of metal shatter away. And you just hear him kind of like <clears throat> clutching his chest as his eyes turn a thick black. And they begin to bleed this black sap as his body just slumps to the ground, dead. Um I have like my hand up and sword out and just like I I had two more things to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have some time to do those because you can hear the sounds of um the three guards who are out the front courtyard are beginning to creak open the doors. Like you can hear like the doors opening um as we do so. Um what would you like to do? Um as I hear the creaking, I want to call out very loudly. The thorn hand is dead, and if you don't want to meet the same fate, I suggest you stop. Okay. Give me an intimidation check. Azara. Okay. okay. Oh, I hope I skelly. <laughs> 16. 16. Okay. I'll make some thoughts about these guys. I'm gonna give them a wisdom. I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna make a wisdom save for these guys to see Grr. how affected they are. Is there a corpse left from him there is yeah oh yeah there's definitely a corpse left of this guy 100 well, percent. while we're waiting on that like while to see what they say i just grab it by the hair and i'm just gonna start dragging it upstairs oh you okay. know, it's gonna be my idea great minds think alike hey <laughs> 20 for these guys um okay so you hear uh what uh, the doors open, and before you are these three vicious-looking things, but you can see the tattoos around their arms are already beginning to burn away as well. You can see it kind of turn into flecks of black dust that's fading up and drawing away from their bodies. And they're just looking extremely confused as they look in. Um, they definitely seem to have hesitated from your words. They still have weapons drawn, and there's this moment of... Oh, they'll probably attack if they feel like the need to defend themselves. So what in this instance, <laughs> Marcel is dragging the body up the stairs behind all of them. They haven't seen the body yet. Um, so what's the plan? You've got Agnes, Zara and Tarkle stood there, weapons drawn. You know, Agnes looks quite bloody, I think at this point, right, Anna? Like you've you've taken yeah. some, some wounds. Um, you know, Tarkle's got like a kind of couple of gashes in him. There's this moment where, they're still not sure if they can take you in a fight, but they're definitely hesitating. What do you guys do? I'm going to like... Oh, go ahead. No, you go. You have the uh, body. Yeah, my plan, like, I'm just going to go up to them and just kind of throw the body in front of them. Just be like... Right, okay. So you kind of drag it back yeah. in and throw it into the throne room, effectively. And just leave. There's... The <laughs> No, there's there's more of us. We 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 could take all of you, and and you can hear like the sounds of the barracks are beginning to kind of like get themselves free, and uh, you know, begin to sort of draw weapons and things like that. Uh, of, uh, uh, why? Would I'll you? be the next thorn hand. Uh, backing Marcel up, seeing that he's trying to intimidate them, I'll kind of uh -huh. guide my fire spirit closer to them, and kind of like <clears throat> start lightning crackling in my hand, and I'm like, if you don't want to meet the same fate as your master i suggest you all surrender because this keep belongs to us so i want my, my i want my spirit. spirit to kind of like bulk up and, be like, and then you've got the same thing agnes with like your fire spirit kind of like yeah. casting yeah, flames we, everywhere we just like avengers line up in front exactly. of exactly yeah yeah dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun. Sweeping camera I think shot. <laughs> with that music in in mind, uh, they don't surrender, 
but they run they turn around and they make a break for the side entrance um and as you begin to hear the kind of rattling of weapons kind of as the the larger forces because there's still like 20 30 potential soldiers in the in these barracks um who are now no longer trapped inside um you also begin to hear the set like Cormirian like battle chants and shouts coming from outside the keep and you can hear the clatter of metal and things like that as your own forces and you can hear Elissa like now attack push break down the door um, and you can hear her kind of calling out as you can hear like these heavy slams as your own forces have now made their way back up from Evening Star um, and have begun to sort of break their way in. There is a short but very, very uh, quick turnaround skirmish as some of the thugs try to escape. Your guards like beat them down as they try and run. Some of them do get away. Um, your forces outnumbered don't really chase them down. They focus on basically making sure they can keep each, you know, everyone alive and take the keep. Um, but yeah, you guys have uh, no longer in any sort of major danger. You have uh, one body, one pile of moss and mulch, um, and probably a lot of questions. But so far, the battle for Star Watch Keep is won. You guys have succeeded. Bizarre. Yeah. What would you like before, to do now? Before I'd like to happens. level up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we'll before hopefully we do that. Uh, Azaro is going to walk over to Agnes and be and pat her on the shoulder and say, mm -hmm. "You did well, Your Grace," and and cast a false life on her to give her a few hit points back, or some no, temporary a few hit little points. temporary hit points. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. yeah, you see the 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 lichen kind of burns and falls away from the wound. Um, you can, yeah, you. Oh, the, that's the, eight. I got a four. So eight hit points. So you points. feel this kind of Yay. invigorous energy run through you. Not quite. Uh, it doesn't heal any wounds, but makes you feel like you've got fighting strength left um Agnes, oh, as you do so okay yeah. uh, temporary hit points i'm sorry i can't I, oh yeah there we go i can add those on D, &D beyond it's never been <laughs> you sure can you sure all right can. cool um, so what, what, what do you guys do I say, I say thank you and kind of shiver <sighs> i want to look around um, now that we've kind of taken the keep i want to try to learn anything i can about these two baddies mm. um okay. are we what kind of room are we in so at the moment you can see that in this main sort of keep building the bailey um the room that the the thorn hand you don't really know what else to call them seem to be occupying is is almost like a an audience chamber there are two thrones um pillars with sconces um and it looks like the kind of place where lords and ladies would meet with you know visitors or people from the village that have problems this is kind of your stateroom where you will meet visitors, meet guests, um, you know, host people if necessary. There is also next to you a dining chamber um, with a large table, probably seating for about eight or nine people. Um, there is a kitchen where kitchen staff can fix meals. Behind that, you have um, pantries and uh, servants' quarters. Um, there is a short corridor that leads into the southern tower, which is where Azara saw the mysterious mage woman. Um, this appears to be almost like a rudimentary library. There are stacks of books. You can see that a desk has been covered in parchments, um, writings. There are a few odd ornaments here, uh, a carved deer skull. Um, there is a green crystal that seems to have been laid out um, amid sort of arcane runes. Um, then the top half of this main bailey is the the armor room is the best way to describe it is the room with the suits of armor it seems to be some sort of gallery uh, and then lots of uh you know two large bedrooms a couple of smaller bedrooms for visitors and uh, dignitaries and assistants to sleep in um yeah and it, it's not massive it, it needs expanding if you wanted it to be some grand castle but it is very thick sturdy stone um, all very well decorated. Most of the decoration has been spoiled or ruined. You'd probably need to get that replaced, um, but serviceable, but nonetheless. Uh, Is this where we're going to live? It can be. Oh. Uh, you have you have this. You have the keep here. Star Watch Keep is quite prestigious. Um, it's certainly where, if you wanted, say, to have a research tower built, Azara, this would be where it would need to be built. Mm -hmm. um, the the Baron and Baroness would be expected to maybe not live here, but certainly entertain here and, and mm -hmm. meet people here. Um, but you also have the estate in the village itself. There is a, um, a sort of manor house there for you as well, um, which is a bit closer to the people, but it's not defensible. 
it's not as grand. Um, it's more like a place to stay in the village, basically, uh, if you need to. Um, is there any what? of the any of the retreating forces that were kind of taken captive by our forces? Yeah, there's definitely some. Uh, I think that because of the number difference, there's not a lot of captives, but there are definitely some. Um, the rest of the bandits all kind of flee towards the woods or up into the mountains. Um, and if Agnes's stories about the local area, the ones who flee into the mountains are probably going to get eaten by bugbears and ogres. Uh, the ones that flee into the forests are probably going to end up in some sort of uh, at the mercy of some forest spirit uh, that will no doubt take no mercy on such uh, evil hearted brigands. Um, I want to ask um, Elissa Il to yep. question the prisoners she's gotten about the mage because <laughs> and i'll explain to her what happened that we we saw her but she was clearly in some sort of construct body she said she'd see us again so she's probably mm -hmm. somewhere else and i want to get any information about who she is where she actually is what kind of mm -hmm. magic she's doing all that kind of stuff sure you you probably find Alyssa. you walk out into the courtyard and you can see that you know, her her polished armor is spattered with a little bit of blood. Um, her little tusks kind of in a sort of grimace as she's obviously just coming out of a furious battle. Her black hair is a little bit loose, kind of falling around her side. She's a bit startled. It's like, ah, oh, uh, yes, of course, Your Grace. Uh, we've managed to capture a few, but I was more focused on making sure our men were alive and getting to you was the main priority. Um, we've managed to capture a few, and I'll see to it that they're questioned as, as per your wishes. Uh, I believe that your the Baron, your brother, uh, as also the three that he asked us to take back to the village have been incarcerated in the cellar of a tavern there. We can question them as well. Um, uh, we didn't... Uh, what happened to her? Some sort of construct? You said she just vanished? She decomposed? Uh, perhaps something to speak with mistress uh magister rosara about as well i'm afraid magic is more her speciality than mine um i'm certainly happy to get to work uh kept getting these prisoners sorted uh, she looks around the keep uh, perhaps it may also be if i may speak uh, honestly my lady uh, it may be worth speaking with dusk the seneschal about getting the keep repaired as soon as possible it's not we won't be able to defend it if they do manage to rally their forces if this mage comes back um we'll need this shored up uh, these these walls are not going to be very defensible um this is wise counsel thank you Alyssa. and also she like claps her on the shoulder well fought and thank you i'm sorry we couldn't get here sooner i managed to grab everyone but we made it in time um i think that if nothing else this battle has been uh and she kind of addresses marcel and tackle all of you really this has been very good for the recruits this was well, escorting you to Evening Star has been their first real battle, and I think that this experience has been very valuable for all of them. I think they'll come out of this quite more adept. I'm sad to say that the garrison that was stationed here, we haven't found any of them alive. Um, but quite a few of the villagers seem quite keen on signing up as a sort of militia. We may be able to get them trained up. Um, I think maybe perhaps I'll speak with uh, the Minister at Arms about this, but I have some ideas on how best they can be used if that seems fitting, uh, Minister, and she looks towards Marcel. This kind of goes, fine. <laughs> we'll discuss uh, this later. Would that Marcel just, like, turns and is, in, is already, like, leaving? Mm. <laughs> you see Alyssa is very sort of like, I hate this guy, but I can't say anything. She's just like, <laughs> you're supposed to work with me, damn it. Um, but yeah, she just kind of nods her head, um, smiles, um, looks, she looks at Agnes in a, why are you so injured? I'm sorry I couldn't be here to protect you, my lady. That is a folly of, that is a fault of my own. Next time I, I will make sure that I am here to... You seem right. to have been wounded. I'm fine. Hmm. I held my own just fine. Look at all the fire I made. Do you see the fire? My the, lady, the I'm singe. not in any doubt doubting that you did not hold yourself uh, to great standard, but it is... I would worry if anything were... Anything permanent were to happen to you. 
It is my duty to protect you. Well, it's my duty to protect the people. So by protecting the people, you were protecting me, and I thank you. Mm. Very well. Thank you, my lady. And she nods uh, and makes her way uh, to do as of asked. What is Tarkel, Marcel, and Azara? What are you guys doing? Uh, you said there's a pile of beautiful furs and treasures just sitting there on that table, <laughs> correct? There is, yes. Uh, I think first, Azara would start pilfering through that to see if there's anything around her size oh yeah i mean yeah. i think certainly there is um there's some noble noble ladies dresses uh fur shawls mm -hmm. jewels mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. all sorts of things like that you could definitely outfit yourself um in quite finery if you wanted to just take it so um, knowing that this keep is now ours she kind of saves that for later but knowing that there's more important pressing matters at hand would go to oh. the library to see if um there's anything on this mage anything on this weird nature power sure. that she has um, and sure. kind of speed read as much as she can because I want to see if I can write a letter to Demlin to mm -hmm. kind of send the information that I have back home to him to see yeah. if he has any information or even Sara Lee, I think is the other girl's name, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Sarah. either if, if either of them have some sort sure. of information within the War Wizard Academy or anything mm -hmm. on such magic. Cool. Perfect. I think that's the, the letter probably will, you come back to you. It'll take some time to get there and then come back, but you can definitely gather the info. Yeah. Um, I'll go over more about like kind of stuff that you find in a second. Okay. Uh, Tarkal and Marcel, and I think from you guys in particular. Uh, was I able to overhear Agnes's conversation with Elisa? Sure. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I don't think that so was in I private. Know was that... it Anna? No. No. So Agnes has already given her orders, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually think, and this we're like in the middle of the night, aren't we? It's like three or four a.m. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. late. Yeah, I think that I think that I want to sleep. I think Tarko's okay. pretty tired. Sure. Yeah, you've, if, if uh, we, th those I, I just I just want to make sure that dusk is going to come here in the morning. So that yeah, can you can send word for him. You can definitely yeah. send word for him. Like uh, Elisa will pass that on. Um, she'll go down to the village and and pass that on. Uh, that's part of her duty. Um, yeah. For sure, easy. So you can, do you find a place here? Do you like go up onto the second floor of the main keep and are like, I'm going to take this bedroom and you find a blanket and you're like, sleep. Yeah, I find like the the most bare room if there is any or like whatever sure. bed, you know what I mean? Just minimal. Yeah, sure. Yeah, easily done. Comfortable. Easily done. Um, Marcel. Marcel's going home. It's just going to go back to the house to rest. I'll go back into the village and go to the estate house. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So without a word, Why? you just kind of begin trudging, trudging home. Or does Agnes, Agnes try to stop her? him? I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah. As he starts leaving, I'm like, where are you going? I had for a job. Job's done. I'm going to sleep. Well, I think we just talked about maybe sleeping here from now on. You don't have to make the journey back to the town it's gross here i mean that's up to you whatever you feel i mean that's fine just <clears throat> you know splitting the party and all that oh, as the adage the old adage goes <laughs> that old Comerian saying never <laughs> split, split the party, the party. <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i'll find a bed sure Easily done. Is um, there a bed in the library? There is, yeah. There's. It looks like um, a bed's been brought here. Uh, it's covered in a thick green velvet kind of blanket and things like that. It looks like, uh, you know, there's a silver carafe of wine that's been mm -hmm. left here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, going to set it, up it's, shop in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you get the impression that she definitely set up shop in here. Yeah. Um, and there's very little, little else. Uh, you just yeah, slip if... into the spot that mage left. Exactly. I'm like, mm, new mage. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, Actually, is, is there a fire still going? Um, like, there's a little fire. campfire out the front in the courtyard. Yeah, there's like a little campfire and stuff. I think I'm just you gonna can see the post up next to that. Just kind of like throw my sword into the ground, like sticking up, and then just huh? sit next to it. Sure. Yeah, you kind of uh, get comfortable. A few of the soldiers are kind of checking out the supplies and um, kind of looking at you in that nervous like should we talk to him no let's not talk to him way uh, as they kind of keep their distance um but you do you do hear the voice again in your head sort of like 
that woman, I, I could hear her thoughts. She, she, she could see me. Well, that's concerning. What if she, do you think she might know a way to help? She seemed powerful. I didn't think to stop and ask. Yeah, Did I you suppose want to? not? Well, no. She she didn't seem very nice, and and she did seem that. Well, she did. It's just we've never, well, not since you know, know. the escape. We'll we'll figure it out. If it was meant to be this time, it would have been. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad that I'm I'm glad that everything. I'm glad you're okay, and and everyone else seems okay. Get some rest. Oh, <laughs> I suppose. Yes. You just hear the sort of faint, nervous laugh uh, <laughs> in your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Azara, making your way through the notes. Um. <laughs> Sorry. There's smoke in the kitchen. The alarm is loud. The alarm is loud. Ignore I that. That's amazing. That's uh, Agnes. <laughs> Agnes, yeah. Agnes is like trying to cook in the kitchen and there's some sort of magical Nothing. sensor going on. Um, it's funny. There's like an unseen going, servant that just right. says, <laughs> just aware. says that there is a fire in the kitchen. Um, it's funny these notes you kind of quickly realize most of the books here were must have been left by the previous lord a lot of it's things like local history economics it, it, it's like a rich man's library of like books that have never really been read mm. the only stuff that's interesting is the stuff that's out on the table that looks like it was actually being looked at and investigated there's two things i think you would notice immediately the rest would probably take time with Demolin or research mm -hmm. one is that the symbols carved on the deer skull are fey they're sylvan runes and they are of a fey nature um which you know because of your uh, things that have happened in the past right there are some similarities between the runes here and the runes you saw in the ritual chamber with gawain the other thing you notice is the green gem. Mm -hmm. um, the, the circles around it, uh, it takes a little bit of time to decipher. They're written in draconic, which, um, but you may, which you can read. Um, the symbols, most of them don't actually say anything. They're more like arcane symbols or their purposes. Um, they appear to have been designed as some sort of scrying tool. Um, and the only thing you can really make out and I think that you would probably find this in a in a small letter tucked into uh, these notes and things like that. There is a letter that simply reads, uh, "My dearest uh, Lady Shadowbriar, I eagerly await your next visit. the The life here in Arabelle is miserable without you. Uh, you are my light. You are my life. I cannot wait till we are together again." Um, and then it's just signed with an anonymous M. Um, does hmm. any of this ring a bell to me? The letter? No. The letter, no. none of it. But those symbols, yeah, they'll be with you as you try and sleep, as you cannot help but recognize some of them from the ritual chamber. And this, this crystal, can I use this to scry? You think that this probably would take... You probably wouldn't be able to use it yourself. This looks like okay. it was very specifically created. For somebody mm -hmm. it might help you reduce the cost of like making your own because you can okay. study this one and make your own so normally i think scrying you have to have like a thousand gp item to use something you horrific. Could cut, <laughs> yeah you could you could spend 500 instead you could cut okay. the price in half by studying this crystal um, um well i'm gonna tuck that away in my satchel sure. of goodness but before i want to go to sleep i want to look out the window um mm -hmm. and see marcel kind of out there by himself in the fire and I want to throw yeah. a fur out the window and just <laughs> yell, don't catch a cold and then go to sleep. <laughs> uh, amazing. Won't yeah. say anything, but just kind of throw it over. 
very Jon Snow on the Night Watch, like <laughs> around the campfire, big sort of thick fur cloak um, as the soldiers all begin milling around behind you. Uh, and I think that that is probably going to be a fantastic point for us to kind of wrap up today's episode. Um, Yay! Do we all get a long rest? Uh, you all get a long rest and <gasps> uh, and very much in accordance with Nate's request earlier, now that you guys have acquired Star Watch Keep, you will level up. Bizarre. Since we have hey. eight Do minutes, not expect do another live? level up for a little while. Sh should we do it live since we're all here and we have eight minutes? Uh I mean, you can do. Uh, generally, yeah, like you guys can pick what you want. I mean, I don't know how much you need to do. I think you guys are going to be level eight. So there'll be things like ability score modifiers or feats um, that you can pick from. But also feats. don't feel the pressure. It takes me don't too long pressure to, to yeah, it takes me too long those to look things. At but we should, oh, yeah. roll, we should roll health. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we will probably begin next week's episode. We'll time skip straight to the morning with Dusk arriving um, because he's going to have some updates for you guys in terms of your next steps. So we can begin next week with a kind of like, right, this is where things are now. Maybe it's like a day later. We might kind of like jump skip 24 hours and just basically be like, right, Dusk has put together a report on like, this is the damage to the keep. This is how much loot was you found, yeah. blah, blah, mm. blah. This is what the next steps you want to do. Um, I think it was briefly mentioned in the previous episode, but there is a uh, missing Mason, which is also a problem. Right. Uh, there were some miners <laughs> and a uh, Mason who was missing, um, yeah. who would be very very conveniently helpful in repairing mm. keeps walls mm. Um, mm. so mm, mm. Mm. Um, so we can do that and we'll go over that next week that'll be a lot more of the kind of kingdom management stuff but uh yeah you guys did uh, that was great that was a fun little sort of epic encounter very anime-esque encounter which i'm yeah. a big fan of yeah um, yeah we we were good. effective again i'm so proud you of were. us i also yeah. just want to say i rolled my health bam boom big old nice. six nice best you can hope for i know sure. <laughs> cool thank you uh, any mark. thoughts that was really fun no yeah you want more my only fun. thought is that you're the best mark <laughs> <laughs> i can't deal with that sort of feedback maker it needs to be i'm like, oh, sorry yeah, well, uh, i thought that was good but uh, you know. I, I, I thought that was really good could use more flying cats is that better we will get the flying cats it's been yes. you've only had a day tress him yes. There will be Tressim. Do not worry. I All promise. Right. I have, promise. Like, flying cat. Tressim aviary. A, a felineary. A felineary. I will add that. Tressim <laughs> aviary. I will add that to one of my op building options that you may yes, be like. We're please. going to build a Tressim aviary, um, or like a Tressim. <laughs> what are they things when you have like homing pigeons, like that send messages and stuff? You can oh, have a, yeah. a trained a version. Yeah, sure. Tressim -E. coat. Yeah. And then Perfect. we'll have a cat show or Tressim show, and they'll be pedigreed, <laughs> and everybody in the nation can come bring their Tressim to show off and win a prize. Ooh. Win a Perfect. date with Marcel. What? <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. It's going to be that classic thing of he's like, what? And you just turn up and you're like, so we auctioning this off? off now. Yeah. We're just turning this I into has a no idea. It's whatever. <laughs> I think kind of one of my favorite human moments was definitely the uh, Tarkle kind of embarrassedly boosting uh, Azara. I think that was my favorite kind of human moment of the of the episode. Oh, um, and boy. then you had followed by epic sort of mysterious mage and nonsense going on as well. Um, my fave is Agnes consistently being proud of her magic and then Azara doing exactly the same magic better <laughs> right after her. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't on purpose, I promise. <laughs> What's so Agnes great is, like, is that if that if that save spirit. didn't happen, if that save didn't happen, she did 31 damage and you did yeah. 30 damage on your turn before. <laughs> so literally yeah. she outdid you by one. It's <laughs> yeah. so perfect. That the if the if they hadn't used the leg the legendary resistance would have would have KO'd him. He would have just been like lightning bolt dead. Heck yeah. Gone. Heck yeah. Um but yeah, no, it was good. Uh, the the fact that you guys just unloaded damage on the mage meant that she couldn't do anything as well. It was just like didn't didn't got one turn basically. I'm of just, really glad I'm dead now. We would have been in trouble. I oh think, yeah, if she had scary. gotten some stuff. I had some stuff. I had some stuff prepped. Um, Not on I was gonna, our watch. Dispel I, magic ready for that like, elemental spirit. This group is way better than a lot of other groups I've been in at like <laughs> strategizing before a battle and then keeping with a strategy. Mm, yeah. And it's it's weird because we like beat these, we beat people and I'm like, wait, we did? 
We did. Yeah. We yeah. what? Oh, yeah. nice. I think this is the first time, and correct me if I'm wrong, in D and D ever that we went into what we were told was a stealth mission and made it a stealth mission. Yeah. <laughs> Very well, you did. First time ever, 100%. Well, I've never uh, done that before. <laughs> no one has. That was great. I think it was good because it was like a great moment. Like Tarkle actually kind of lived up to like what Tarkle does. Like this is his thing. Like he's the assassin and sneaking around. Marcel mm -hmm. got to kind of be like that magical kind of, you know, mercenary killer where it's like teleporting up and like, no, nothing personal kid and then <laughs> taking somebody out mm -hmm. and then all the meanwhile like agnes is just building up this fire of like stealth gotta be stealth gotta be stealth fire yeah. time <laughs> that's so true she was um, just like holding her little fire yeah. spirit like now, and then like azara is like the more finessed magic of like mage hand open the door do all this stuff i'm gonna polymorph and scout around and then lightning time i think it was like a really good sort of highlighted what everybody does really really well um apart from poor shady's natural ones that mm. i felt was i wrote three unfair. ones in a row chat told me because it was my initial uh my initiative and then yep. my two did. failures it was Jeez. great mm, that's, that's the worst it sucks um but yeah well thank you we very much do everybody. shout outs before six yes sorry oh, yes. i forgot about this let's do that take it away anna go oh first again Hi, yep. I'm at Anna Prosser on most social media platforms and my website. If you would like to find out anything more about me, those are good places to do so. I will have one more stream show this week on Thursday evening where I play Star Wars, Star Wars role playing and any other things that I do will be posted on my social media. Also, you can follow my dog on social media at Poanono. She's really cute, probably cuter than me. I choose Nate. Hi, uh, I'm... Nate, Nate, then Sharp Nate wants to battle. I have a new album coming out in October for all you fans Ooh. of the spooky season. It's got songs that I wrote inspired by a bunch of video games. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can just go to natewantstobattle.com, pre order it there. Popcorn Mika. Hi, I'm Mika. Um, I, I'm probably going to be doing some cosplay Halloween stuff since there's nothing else to do and it's only August. Uh, so check my <laughs> social medias for that. My dog also has an Instagram. It's at Rini's Wild Shape and she's cuter than me. I love my dog. Shady. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Shady. I roll natural ones for a living and oh. um, <laughs> I'm also growing my hair out. I haven't cut it since January on top, um, yeah. which is pretty great. Uh, I will be in another D&D show this Thursday at uh, Brett Ooh. Ultimus. I am playing um, I'm playing a little wizard boy whose familiar just got ripped out of his chest last week. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty <gasps> upset about it. Ooh. Um, so you can check that out and also uh, tune in to my Twitter to see how long my hair gets in another nine months. So uh, wow. Mark. Nice. Thanks, man. I am also growing my hair out. I don't know how long for. What is time? Time is meaningless now. Um, you can check me out. I DM my show, which is called High Rollers D&D. &D. Um, high rolls DD on Twitter and on Twitch. Um, that's on Sundays. And then we also do Curse of Strahd on Thursdays. So if you want to see more of me GMing, a very different group of players who are very, very different to these guys, um, you can come and check those out. Uh, UK times, 5 p.m. on Sunday, 8 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, we can also you can also check out all of our VODs on YouTube. High rollers D D. That's the main thing to go and check out. Don't worry about anything else that I do. It's not as important or as cool. Um, totally so you can go is. check He's that awesome. out. <laughs> it's not true but uh thank you guys so much for watching thank you white text friend uh for sticking with us and running the stream and all your funny commentary um enjoy more D, &D content here on the D, D twitch channel and we will see you all very very soon take care bye 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 bye